The choice facing humanity is extinction or regeneration. This extinction, the one we are living through, 200 species a day, a million threatened, is an extinction by design. What's important about food is that it is life and we should be protecting it, defending it, because our life depends on it. Human development is primarily about being more rather than having more. The global food system is accountable for something like a third of all greenhouse gas emissions. 60% of the global biodiversity loss over the last 50 years and currently uses around 70% of all usable fresh water on the planet. There's no question that the current food system poses an existential threat to humanity. A big chunk of what we catch in the ocean goes to make food for things like chickens and pigs. Global fish catch is stable or declining despite increasing effort. And that is an indicator, of course, that the oceans are under threat. We need to think of fish and aquatic invertebrates as animals, not as commodities, not as natural resources. We have witnessed in recent years record high food prices. This is not because we are not producing enough. It is the result of food production that is heavily dependent on the use of fossil energy. Food systems reform, however well intended it is, will not succeed unless we address squarely the question of power. If we want to end factory farming, we have to turn off the funding tap that flows so freely from the big commercial banks. Over 60% of antibiotics are actually used in farm animals. And this is very often to treat or uh, prevent or control the diseases caused by the highly intensive, unhygienic and stressful conditions in which many intensively farmed animals are kept. The impacts on disease and health and pandemics, that the kinds of measures that we need to take in food systems are also going to have positive benefits um, in enabling us to prepare better, to prevent the next pandemic. About the same number of people die each year of dietary related ill health as died at the peak of COVID. We need radical change in the way that the market works. It's not just consumer demand, which is driving change in food systems, but the way that food systems are designed, the way that they're oriented, affects what people eat. The great news is that there are beautiful, life-affirming, compassionate solutions ready at hand to take us to that new spring. I think that in 150 years' time, it is very possible that we as a species don't eat meat. We've set a commitment to reduce our animal protein content by 40% by 2030 and 25% by 2025. There's a large body of evidence to support that a healthy plant-based diet is really good for us as individuals and can support planetary health. We should be consuming a diet primarily around whole plant foods, minimizing or avoiding meat. We've proven that there are better methods to farm and ways that we can be sustainable, that we can be productive and even regenerate resources. My productivity and profits went up because I started to move toward a natural system. The potential for good welfare, for really good welfare, where animals experience positive emotions, is possible in regenerative farming systems. The health of soil, plants, animal, people, ecosystem, and the planet is one and indivisible. Farmers are restoring the landscapes without planting a single tree. And this is part of the agroecology knowledge where the land was degraded and through tree-based restoration, uh, you can see biodiversity coming back. One of the reasons why I'm excited about cellular agriculture is that I think it's a solution to environmental degradation. We're going to shift from agriculture growing kind of organisms for food to growing cells for food. The moment that you have an innovative idea. The moment that you have new solutions, there's an establishment that tells you this cannot happen. We need to stop prioritizing the money and we need to put the SDG targets and indicators above the money in the markets. The question is, will it move fast enough for us to win the race against time that we have now entered? We need a United Nations global agreement on food and farming to move us away from industrial, animal agriculture. We have eight harvests left 
to save the sustainable development goals. 60 harvests left to save the future for our children, for animals, people and the planet. The clock is ticking. There is no time to lose. What we do now will define the next 1,000 years.